Hello and welcome to another 31 Days of Horror 2017 Toronto After Dark edition. Yes, it is the last film of the zombie night. So, yeah, obviously, there's going to be some zombie mayhem in this. Um, but we're looking at something a little bit different. It is a Canadian film. Um, but it's also a World War I film. Uh, Amazingly enough, you don't get a lot of you get a lot of World War II films. You don't get a lot of World War One films being made these days, or in general, I guess. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I was quite surprised. I would uh, when I first saw, I think it was the poster, or the trailer, or something like that. I first thought it was going to be you know like a World War Two Nazi type thing, and because it was zombies, it was going to be another World War Two zombie Nazi movie. Um, but it uh, turned out it was going to be World War One, and we are talking about the film Trench Eleven. Yes, this is a Raven Banner release, um, directed by Leo Sherman. Leo Sherman, who um, has mostly done um, television, directed television, um, like the uh, How We Do It, starring How Howie Mandel uh, television series, uh, Fool's Gold. Uh, about you know gold prospecting, uh, the Carbonero effect, um, and then there was Scare Tactics. Uh, I think Scare Tactics is no. I, I've seen a few How We Do It and Fool's Gold episodes, but I think Scare Tactics is kind of the only one um, I've really watched. Um, now Trench Eleven isn't his first feature film. He has done a couple of other uh, previously, but um, mostly he's known for television. Um, now he co-wrote this. Uh, movie with Matt Boy, who um, was um, I'm trying to think, he was I guess Destination Fear um, is is where you might know his work from. Um, he wrote that. But, yeah, I think that's about it. That's, that's essentially it. Um, and so, those two come together to do Trench 11. Now, essentially, Trench 11 is um, a film that, like I said, takes place in World War I. Um, and it's kind of like the tail end of the war. And um, there, the Allied forces essentially get word of this bunker, German bunker, um, that's supposed to be abandoned. But it's not like any other bunker that they've really come across before. It is like super deep, like multiple levels deep, going way down in the earth. Um, so they decide that they're going to get a group of soldiers together to go check out this thing because they don't know what's down there. They don't know what the Germans are cooked up. Um, they don't know if perhaps, you know, like the Germans made something down, you know, chemical warfare or something like that, made, created something in there and have left now that they've been able to make it, you know, have left and they're going to use it against the Allied forces or whatever. So they figure, you know what, we got to get some intel. We got to get in there and see what's going on. So because this is, you know, underground bunker trenches um, they decide to get a um, a decorated um, tunneler um, who uh, has already survived one cave-in um, and essentially you would think that that would be enough you know what you've done your time <laughs> you, you managed to live when nobody else did and um, yeah Thank you, you've served your country, move on. But no, because of his skills, they pull him in, and he's going to be going down and essentially being the, not, not, he is essentially like the leader of the group because he knows what he's doing, but he's not, you know, the, the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, highest ranking officer. Um, I believe he is a lieutenant, Lieutenant Burton, played by Rosef, Sutherland, yes. You know the last name, Sutherland, because he is the son of Donald Sutherland. 
Yes. Um, now, he has done uh, a few... Well, he's done quite a bit, actually. I mean, he's a Sutherland, right? So he kind of, you kind of get that easy way in, right? But uh, um, he was in Dead Before Dawn 3D. Uh, he was in um, Hellions, which I think was... I think I've done that on the 31 Days of Horror at some point. Maybe was it this year? Was it last year? I don't even remember. Um, uh, but where I've... Well, other than Hellions, um, if you've ever watched the show Rain, R-E-I-G-N, um, you know, historical uh, type uh, period piece uh, television series, he plays Nostradamus in that um, before, you know, eventually ending up in Trench Eleven. Um, he is joined on, on this thing by Robert Stadlaber, uh, who plays the role of Reiner, um, and you may know him from such things as, um, I'm trying to think where... Well, he, he, I, he plays the German, doesn't he, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, Fly Away from uh, 2012 um, I'm trying to think there was something else that I could I looked him up and he was in it but I can't remember what it was Sugar but uh, yeah so he's <laughs> he plays Reiner um, uh, he was an enemy at the gates that's what I was, I was thinking of. He was an enemy at the gates. It wasn't a big part, but he was uh, a spotter in that. Um, and then you've got uh, Dr. Priest, played by Charlie Carrick, who was also in Rain. Um, so, you know, you have that kind of connection. He was also in The Borges. Uh, again, some more... Um, period work. Um, like I said, well, we do a lot of period stuff up here in Canada, I guess. <laughs> uh, then we get Capitan Mueller, played by Sean Benson, who uh, was in Inhuman Condition, the television series. Uh, Ark, that Netflix uh, movie, sci-fi movie. Uh, he played Sonny in that. Uh, he was uh, Crowbar in uh, Gangland Undercover, the TV series. Uh, and then he, he was in uh, one of my favorite television series of late uh, Channel Zero. Channel Zero. I love Channel Zero. Um, so he, he was in that. Um, then there was also... Let's see who else do we got there that we should mention. Uh, Major Jennings, played by Ted Atherton. Yes, Ted Atherton, uh, Atherton who was in uh, Forget About It, if, if you... If you know that one, he was also in Degrassi, The Next Generation, um, you know, classic Canadian type stuff, um, and then a whole bunch of other television and such before getting to Trench Eleven eventually, uh, and then finally, I guess the last one that we should probably mention is Private Kelly, played by Adam Hertig, who was also in uh, Channel Zero, um, but yeah, like I said small group of allied soldiers go in there's going to be germans there's going to be allies and there's going to be zombies these are essentially what the germans were doing in this deep underground place is uh they were creating some uh biological warfare um <laughs> um essentially it's they created a weapon uh, a biological weapon um, that uh, essentially got out of hand and infected people in the bunker. Uh, so when these guys go in, obviously they got to deal with this. Um, and what started off as essentially this mission to uh, search and recover and get you know information uh, back to the Allied forces um, quickly becomes this sort of like um, fight for survival. Um, when you know one of their group ends up infected, and they have to deal with uh, these other infected, um, and uh, yeah, so <laughs> it's 
it's one of those things where it it it's very it's uh, I mean this is an indie film so it takes some low budget liberties with things and it it fills the film with more dialogue and um, interplay between these soldiers uh, than it does with special effects and explosions and stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, there are explosions and gunshots and, you know, and gunfire and some really, 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 I mean, if you watch the trailer, you can see it, some really good uh, physical effects, especially with the infected t stuff going on, um, which I actually loved. Uh, I thought it was really, really well done. Um, and uh, I believe it was all done in camera. Uh, the director was there for a Q&A, so I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, he said everything was done in camera. But but yeah, so, you know, it's got, <laughs> it's got World War imagery. I, I think the set pieces, um, I mean, it is World War I, so there isn't a lot of stuff going on with set pieces. They are very plain, but they are very realistic. Uh, costumes, um, I mean, dialogue may have taken a little bit of liberty here and not being quite period specific. Um, and they're, I'm not a historian, so I can't say whether or not the costumes and weapons and stuff were um, correct for the time period, but I think they were. Um, and so you get this Sutherland playing, I guess you'd call him your lead character, and he really, he really does a, a really good job. I, like I was quite, quite pleased with his performance. He does. He is the leading man. He is the one who carries the film essentially. Um, and I think it's yeah. It's it's it really comes down to. Telling the story and and the the relationship between these soldiers. Part of the problem is these soldiers are just they're not like long time friends. Some of them are distrustful of others, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it makes for this interesting dynamic of you know self preservation versus you know saving the group or saving mankind. Because you know if this if this event you know this this disease that they find gets out, then you know. It, it's worse. It's worse than the world war, essentially. Like it, they can't let it get out, type thing. Um, and so, it yes, it is a, a zombie film of sorts. And yes, you may get the 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 impression that it's you know just another one of these zombie war movies that you know in a in a bunker or a thing. We've we've seen similar type stuff usually in World War Two, like I'd pref you know said at the beginning. Um, but no, this is, it has a different feel to it, and it, it does, uh, I would say it could have used a little bit more, um, use of trying to get that, that sort of, uh, claustrophobic feel. I, I did think for a, a bunker, and they actually mentioned it, it's like a huge bunker, so it's bigger than they, you know, that's one of the reasons why they go there, it's bigger <laughs> than they're, they, they've ever seen type thing, so, um, Part of the thing is, is I really could have used, you know, like if you see some some war films where they're, you know, going through underground tunnels and stuff like that, um, you, you really get that that closed in feeling, you know, where it's hard to move around. This is not so much they're walking around; it's fully, you know, upright and stuff for the most part. Um, so I, I would have appreciated a little bit more of that claustrophobic feeling. Not to say that there isn't any of it; it's just that I. <laughs> When I hear, you know, going into trenches and you're going to get a tunneler, I'm expecting, like, outside of the first room that you're in, or maybe the second room after that, you're starting to, you know, it's really starting to close in on, on, on the people in the film and thus the viewer and, you know, doing a good job of trying to make the audience claustrophobic. And that's kind of what I was expecting. Didn't quite get that, but... It's not to say that's a bad thing. It's just it wasn't quite. It wasn't what I was expecting. Again, I was also expecting a World War Two movie and got a World War One movie. So hey, <laughs> it's not necessarily all about expectations. Um, but yeah, I was I was 
I think Trench Eleven is a perfectly fine little, you know, indie genre film that uh, um, locks you inside. It, it, the premise it's 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 set, you know, setting forth and and gives you a little jolts here and there and and you you know it's it's it, it's all about establishing the mood um via you know via the characters and the you know the script um that's been put there rather than using a big budget effects right but the effects that are in the film still are, are, you know what, they were quite impressive. One of the reasons why I'm sure Raven Banner was all over this film. They they tend to find quality. I'm not going to lie. I, I like what Raven Banner is doing. I like what they're putting out. So, yeah, Trench Eleven, it's uh, one of those films where uh, if you think... See, this is the thing. You, you, you're going to think that you... You can pass it up because, you know what, it's just another World War II zombie, you know, bunker, trench film, whatever. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that's not quite the case. Yes, it is like World War II, but it's World War I, so it's not quite the same. It's not Nazis. They're just Germans. Um, it's not a big-budget film. I mean, you don't get too many big-budget films of this nature, uh, one day we probably will, but um, I don't know. It, it's just one of those things. I, I really, I did enjoy the film. I, re I, 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 that's all it is, there is to it. I enjoyed the film. I thought it was well done, considering the budget, you know, constraints. Um, they managed to pull off a hell of a lot of good stuff, um, and sort of maybe a little bit, you know, getting a little bit more claustrophobic in there. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really have any faults with it. I'd give it probably a solid 3 out of 5 if I if I had to give it a rating, which I do, because that's what I do. Um, but yeah, Trench 11. Um, yeah, it's it's on from Raven Banner, so it's going to be getting a release um, by the time you watch this. It may already be out. I don't know if it's <laughs> coming out at the after the... F Sometimes it happens with the festival, like a month later, the DVD comes out. I don't know if that's going to be the case with this one, but I do know that it's coming. Raven Banner releases all their stuff to physical media, which is awesome, and I will pick it up as soon as I can uh, when that happens. So, yeah, comment down below if you've seen the film, what you thought of it. Keep it spoiler-free as always. Thanks for watching more 31 Days of Horror to come, because we got a long way to go still. Anyways, till next video, take care. Have a good one.